Well, at this stage, let's have a look at Olivia Newton-John's latest, a musical called Xanadu. In this, Miss Newton-John bursts into life from a wall poster and immediately heads for Hollywood. myself now. Again, I kind of disappear at the end. I have this thing with Greece, I go out in the car, Xanadu, I disappear into space. I was amused. I was amused. Come back in another life. Sonny, you have to believe me when I tell you that I never wanted to hurt you. That was the last thing I wanted to happen. I'm not as I appear to you. You ever heard the expression kiss by a muse? That's what I am. I come from Mount Helicon. I'm the daughter of Zeus. Jenny Kelly had known me in a life before, and <laughs> it was a good excuse to make a movie, I guess, like that. Universal Pictures announces the most dazzling romantic musical fantasy in years. Xanadu, starring Olivia Newton-John and Gene Kelly. Strangely enough, I don't have that much to do musically in the picture because I'm playing the role of a man who's retired. And when he was young, he wanted to be a musician. He got out of music, went in the construction business, made a tremendous amount of money, retired to Southern California, and misses it. And when he runs into this young man, played by Michael Beck, who we call Sonny in the picture, he meets him on the beach, and then he meets him in a shopping mall, and they get talking. And they seem to have mutual aesthetic and artistic interests. So we become embroiled, and I help him with his love affair, which is you know who. Olivia Newton-John, yes. Mr. Beck looks bemused from start to finish. Mr. Kelly, all avuncular benevolence, grins so remorselessly that his cheeks must have stretch marks. And Miss Newton-John's behaviour is explained by the fact that she's an Antipodean muse who's been sent to Earth by her father, Zeus. I can only assume that Zeus is in his dotage and should be certified immediately. I kind of got a clue when I found that the director hated music. And he was writing it. And he was going through a divorce at the time. It looked like it may not happen. <laughs> One, two, three, four. The music was great. John Farrow wrote half of it. Jeff Lynne from ELO wrote the other half of it. Kenny Ortega, who is an amazing choreographer, wrote all these street dances in. And the dancing style that's in that movie is popular now. It was 30 years ahead of its time, actually. The script was being rewritten every day and there were some serious problems with it. Luckily we make the films for the public and not for the critics, otherwise we'd be in terrible trouble. And it seems to be that with Grease, for instance, I think the reviews were worse. It's an entertainment film and that's all. It was made for people to just go and enjoy themselves and have fun. And it's not Ben-Hur, it's a fun entertainment fantasy musical film and I think it does that. Like everyone that's seen it has enjoyed it, well, who I've spoken to. When I was told I was going to dance with Gene Kelly, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> no other face could take you off my mind. I was not a dancer trained in any means, so they said, you're going to do a tap dancing routine so I immediately went to tap dancing lessons and for about three months I went to lessons. I have to warn you, I'm never gonna set you free. When Gene came in, he directed and choreographed that segment. So it was probably three weeks of rehearsal with him. Whenever you're away from me, wherever you go, I was the original Dancing with the Stars thing. <laughs> so I got to dance with Gene Kelly and I also did it with John Travolta. So when they asked me to do it, I go, I've done that already. 
But it was very exciting and very terrifying. And my father came to the filming that day when I was dancing with Gene Kelly, just to make it even more terrifying. Cause I'll never be far away. My dad, I think he kind of wished I'd been an opera singer. I feel so embarrassed about this now, but I remember him taking me to the opera one time because he loved opera. We were sitting up in the balcony and he said, darling, listen to that voice, you can hear it up here. Here I am using microphones and everything, and I think secretly he kind of wished I'd been an opera singer. I made an album one time where I sang a beautiful song called Jenny Rebecca. If my dad said, well done, that was a big compliment. It's very English, isn't it? Well done, darling, that was like huge. So he wrote to me and said, well done, and he really liked my interpretation of it. Jenny. What a lucky, 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 lucky girl you are. He was encouraging as time went on, but in the beginning my parents wanted me to go to college and go to university and of course I had no intention and I also didn't have the study skills because my mind was filled with music. According to my parents and to my mother I was always singing and even from a very young age I'd sing harmony. It just came naturally to me and you know I have to thank my father for that because he was Welsh and he had a beautiful voice, could have been an opera singer. But he opted to go into um, academics because he was very brilliant as well and he had a family to support but I think there was always that secret wish that he could have fulfilled singing and acting he was very handsome very charismatic and loved to do that my grandfather won the Nobel Prize for quantum physics my father was a professor of languages and taught German. He spoke perfect German in the war. He was an interrogator of the German prisoners of war. He also worked at Bletchley Park and was part of the team that cracked the code. He's part of that Enigma story and he wasn't allowed to tell us until I think not that long before he died. He made a tape talking about his years there but he was a pretty special dad. Yeah, wonderful man. Cliff Richard gave me my first break on his TV show, and I'm proud tonight to be able to welcome him to Hollywood. This is a duet we've recorded from a movie I've just finished, Xanadu. I went to America to do it in a TV show that was her show. So in a way, after me introducing her to the world in my show, she was very happy to help me and introduce me to the American world. My hopes begin to and I sang suddenly with her the song that John Farrow wrote, which I think is one of the greatest duets ever written because it was right for the guy and it was right for the girl. And of course, there's harmonies in the middle, so it worked out brilliantly for me. Most duets that I've done have been a little difficult. I mean, most duets that I've sang song with females. You sing the bits that you can sing in your main chest voice, and then if it gets too high, you just drop an octave. And how can I feel with Olivia, and suddenly, it seems to me that it changes key. When Olivia came in, it was exactly in her register. When I came in, it was exactly in mine. I take care, no if you dare say what you should say. Make it seem I'm so close to my dream and suddenly it's all
my name's John Farrah. I was Olivia's record producer for many years, starting in England, right through into the States, through the early 80s. One of my favorite songs that I've written myself is Suddenly from Xanadu. I worked really hard on it and I was under a deadline on all the songs in Xanadu I had to have them done in a certain amount of time. bridge on it I was worried about it because I couldn't come up with the lyric like until 10 minutes before I had to present it and so I quickly put down a vocal of my own but when Cliff came in the studio and sang it it suddenly became the real part of the song rather than a desperate search for something to put in eight bars. <laughs> I spent a lot of time roller skates in Xanadu and actually fell down when we were filming suddenly because we were skating around all day, broke my tailbone, ended up at emergency and sat between takes on an ice donut. <laughs> so that's my memory of that song, beautiful as it is, I remember the in-between shots. <laughs> we sang it live to the backing track. And so the studio was all quiet and listening and we sang together. And once we had done it, all the crew applauded. And I thought, that is fantastic. These are hardened people who've seen the best and the worst and they decided to applaud us and congratulate us on good performance. Mm. Hooray for Hollywood. <laughs> you sing a fine duet, you uh, know. I bet you say that to all your partners. Yes, I do. But I mean it. <laughs> yes. Cliff was just the perfect choice because our voices blend so well and it's such a great song and it was wonderful to do that with him. I've always had a dream of doing a live gig, maybe a short tour or a run. You know, she's in Vegas a lot now. Vegas might work for this. She would be the character from the Xanadu where she was this mythical, gorgeous, angelic creature and I would be the earthling and we'd have two stages, one 10 feet up, I would be on the bottom one, and somehow or another we sing duets and we only get together in the last 10 minutes. It's still a little dream of mine to do something like that. I don't think our relationship is necessarily unique, but it is not usual that people in our industry have long-lasting friendships that go on and, and that we're part of each other's lives even though we live in different continents. You know, I reside in Barbados, John and Pat and Olivia are in America. It doesn't make any difference. When they pass through, we meet and it's exactly as it was 30 odd years ago or more, 40 years ago probably. And so uh, it's a treat to be part of all of that. Olivia Newton-John. Who is she and what's her story anyway? Is Olivia really the long-lost Osmond sister? 